for that introduction. It's a pleasure to meet all of you and to discuss about nailing strategy. We're not only going to talk about uh, the nail industry, but we will talk about nailing strategy. In other words, getting strategy right. So, okay, and I see that the host has disabled screen sharing. Please enable that for me so that I can put up my slides. Same thing. Have you already made me co-host? Yes. Uh, Let's try again. Okay, I think I'm now able to. Wonderful. So today we're looking at uh, nailing business strategy. Uh, great pleasure to meet you and a great, great pleasure to be engaging with us so early on a Monday morning. I agree with the Live Your Dream team that indeed it's a wonderful way to start your week on a high. So I hope you have your pens and papers out because we're going to discuss many things and we're going to go a bit fast, but the good thing is that we have the recording that we, you can come back to just to go deeper on the things we are talking about today. Great. So a bit about Huru Consult. Um, yeah, it's been operating since 2007. Before that, uh, I was uh, uh, working in management in uh, one of the local banks. And we've done local and international assignments, mainly looking at strategy, governance, and organizational development, as well as entrepreneurship, finance, and personal development. Personal development is very key. I had one of us here talking about uh, yoga and wellness, and we just look at developing you holistically, whether you're an entrepreneur or you work in a corporate organization or you're just an individual who wants to grow yourself. We also do quite a bit of work in the learning and development space. And our slogan is very simple, freedom to be, which means we take you as you are, but freedom to grow, you can't stay the way you are. We have to keep on growing. So we liberate you. Um, I had one of us talking about Maui. So who do we come from a Swahili word? It's about liberating people and by liberating people, liberating organizations. So on to our topic of the day. And we have to become strategic. And one of the things I'm passionate about, as Edna mentioned in the introduction, I'm passionate about strategy. And we have no choice. If we want to succeed in life, we have to be strategic at the personal level. If we want to succeed in business, we have to become strategic. So yeah, become strategic because as the white rabbit told Alice in Wonderland, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So we're going to look at understanding strategy. We're also going to look at developing an effective strategy. And then we're going to look at what are known as tactics, the things that you do to make it happen. But it has to start with the right beginning. As Steve Covey said, we have to begin with the end in mind. And this will enable you to outline key considerations for um, developing a strategy, yeah, for organizational sustainability. So you want your businesses to outlast you. So that's one of the things. And then we'll also look at how you can create and implement a strategy for your business. And finally, you'll be able to use this in other businesses and other organizations that you might be supporting to develop strategies for. So what I'm laying out here is the groundwork for effective strategy, regardless of the organization you're running. Uh, of course, we are primarily looking at business, but it actually applies across the board. How does this help you? One, you will have clarity. And clarity is one thing that I like to insist on, whether I'm coaching, working with individuals, working with teams, or working with organizations. We have to be clear about what we're doing, and that's what this session will do for you. You'll also have a good roadmap uh, on how to, to take your business from where it is to where you want it to go, and you'll be able to direct your business growth. So instead of it being random and ad hoc, you'll actually now be able to do it more effectively, and you'll have a model that you can use in any other business or organization. So let's start by looking at- Karu, Karu. Yes. Karo, uh, if you can increase your volume a little. Okay. Uh, I think uh, there are enough people who are not uh, who are struggling to hear. Oh. Yeah, okay. a little softer. That's fine. Mm. Um, let me just look okay. at my settings as well. Is that better? Very good. That's very good. Thank you. Yeah, I just made an adjustment to my settings. Thank you for that feedback. Awesome. So. 
Uh, please type in chat, what is strategy and what makes something strategic? So some of us type uh, what strategy is, and then we can look at what makes something strategic. Thank you. Uh, this session will be very interactive, so <laughs> you want to get ready for some interaction because it's a thinking session. Great. Um, so what is strategy and what makes it strategic? What makes something strategic? If somebody wants to share on the mic, just uh, you can do so real quick. Okay, thank you. So Bernard that is saying I will define strategy. Let's put it on the chat. Okay, thank you. So I'll define strategy as a calculated move. Thank you, Bernadette. Yeah. Um, any others want to maybe a few of us are still typing. And let's also think about uh, what makes something strategic. Yeah. Okay, a sense of direction. Thank you, Christine. Good. Okay, good. Um, let's have one or two of us planning and focus. Yes. So I guess that's now answering what makes something strategic. A plan you put down to be able to achieve goals, a roadmap. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Mary, for your responses. The ladies are trending. <laughs> let's see if we have any gentlemen who want to weigh in as well. A long-term plan, a plan. Evans, it's good to see you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so absolutely. That's really what it is. So what makes something strategic that it has been thought about, that there's a plan in action and it is being built up in a coherent way. Thank you all of you who've answered and let's have more of us answering. I see quite a number of us have joined. Okay, we have one more. Um, if you fail to plan, thank you, Christine, you plan to fail indeed. And it doesn't matter what your personality is, we have to become planners. And if you want to build up, whether it's your family, whether it's your business, whether it is your personal life, it's very important to be strategic. And these principles, you can actually apply across the board, even if you're leading a football team. Thank you. So it has been defined, uh, this is the dictionary de definition, as the art of planning and directing overall military operations and movements in a war or battle. So the origin of the word strategy is actually military. And that is where it came from, the planning, directing, because of course you want to win the battle, you want to win the war. So the question is, how do you achieve that? How do you make sure that that happens? So that is what strategy is. Um, but then the business definition is very similar. It's a general direction set for the company and its various components to achieve a desired state in the future. So please go to ahaslides.com right um just uh, browse to that and then we'll answer a few questions there then we'll come back and uh, carry on with our session okay so just go to ahaslides.com slash 582 uu 582 uu in capitals please and then we'll get into a few questions i'd like us to ask and uh, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. So um, if we are there, please type there in chat. Okay. Um, then I'm going to show the slides here and then we'll be able to see as we vote. Remember, go to ahaslides.com slash uu. Thank you. Let me also type it in chat so that you can see. Okay, so there are a few questions we're going to be answering there, as you can see on the screen. Uh, Okay, there we go. So I'm activating it and then you'll be able to see. All right, so we're gonna start um, with us answering. And the reason why I do this sometimes is because it's anonymous. <laughs> you can't see who is saying what, all you can see there are just the answers. 
Okay, so let me put up the screen so that we can see. I see nine of us are on. The rest of us, let's go on. You can also use the, the QR code there. So do you have a written strategy for your business is what we're asking here. And uh, let's see your answers. Um, so far, we have only two who've answered. Let's have the other ones answering. Written means even if it's one page or two pages or 20 pages, you have a written document that outlines your strategy. <laughs> okay, good. So most of us are saying no. At least we are sure about our answers, right? So it's yes or no. Good, thank you. Uh, we'll give it about uh, maybe another 45 seconds to have more of us sharing. Um, yeah, good. So most of us don't. And I think this is probably representative because that is that does reflect the statistics, the global statistics even that most businesses just run and uh, they don't have a plan. They've not thought about where they are now, where they want to go and how they're going to get there. It is so important. And that you can actually develop a one page strategy if you want or a more detailed one. But the important thing is to document it because that enables you to then measure your progress. Let's more of us uh, sign up so that we have more answers, but 10 of us have voted so far, 11 now. And uh, that's where we are. Okay, so most of us don't have, some of us have, kudos, well done. The next question is, have you ever had one? So maybe you don't have one now, but have you ever had one before? That um, you should have that reflecting on your devices, okay? So most of us are saying no. <laughs> I can see the answers are coming faster. <laughs> we are becoming good at this now, right? Let more of us join. Remember, you go to ahaslides.com. 582UU or just scan the QR code, it will bring you to the questions. Wonderful. So most of us have not had one. Let's give it uh, 30 more seconds. Okay, good. Um, let's have more of us answering. We have 12 so far, of which nine have voted. Okay, good, 10 now, right? Very good. So most of us have never had one. Two of us have. So quite telling there that, um, yeah, some of us have now, but before, no. And then how confident are you right now in developing a business strategy? The scale is one to 10. So just slide. Um, let me activate it again. Okay. So just slide your, to, to, to just indicate your confidence levels. And then once you accept, we'll see. So we have a few of us at eight. One of us is at one. Okay, good. So your answers are coming in. Mm -hmm. Most of us are kind of at the halfway point. So the average is what you're seeing moving there. So the average is at actually 4.4 .4 out of, on a scale of one to 10, which is quite, quite low, right? So our confidence levels are low. It can be considered, uh, Complicated process, but it's not that complicated. When we set goals, uh, very often we are trying to be strategic. When we say, I'm going to lose 10 kilos this year, and you're saying, this is how I will lose it, you're actually being strategic. So I want to debunk the fact that it's complicated or it's difficult because it's actually not. Um, but we'll see that even as we go along. The most important thing is to be clear about three things, and I'll share those with you just now. Wonderful. Thank you all for sharing and for weighing in and for giving us, us this very important um, data that uh, we're going to use now as the beginning of our session. Good. So there we are. Take note of your score because we'll do another check at the end. So let's look at some useful statistics. Only 23% of companies use a formal strategic planning process to make strategic decisions. Uh, this is from thrivebusiness.com. <laughs> and that kind of reflected what we saw already, that um, about 25 or just slightly less than that of us actually said that we have a strategy in place. And then 75% um, of successful companies have a formal and established system to inform and manage their strategies. You have to be systematic. You have to be clear. Developing and implementing strategy indeed is a discipline that all of us need to develop if we're in business. Why? 
It's what will take us from where we are to where we want to go in business. It's really valuable because it gives you clarity. It also ensures continuity of your business. It's good for you to think, okay, how will my business look like 10 years from now, 15 years from now, even 20 years from now when you're not in it? It's good to think about the future of your business and start mapping out how you'll get there. Also, it helps you to determine growth for your business, to think about opportunities and new things that you can do in your business. It leads to better anticipation because you're looking ahead instead of just dealing with things in the here and now. And that also enables you to have fewer surprises. So there's a lot of value in being strategic. And remember, when I talk about this, I'm talking about anything that needs strategy, including your own personal life, that you have clarity, you're thinking long-term about continuity growth, you're anticipating better, fewer surprises, and you're able to map out how you're going to achieve what you want. And your business goals will only be achieved through intentionality. Let's remember that we have to be intentional. If Even if you've been running your business haphazardly until now, now can be your day of changing, your day of improving how you do things so that you become intentional. So let's look then at developing an effective strategy. You have to start with your why. What's the purpose of your life? So we're going to go a, li a little bit uh, into the personal development, but it's good to be clear. Why, why your life? Uh, what's the purpose of your life? And then also, what's the purpose of your business? And out of this, you develop your mission statement because your mission statement needs to articulate the why of your business. In other words, the purpose of your business. So as Simon Sinek says, start with why. Why are you alive? What's your purpose? What's the purpose of your business? How does the purpose of your business fit into your personal purpose? And you can't say to make money. Why? Because we don't just make money for its own sake. There's a purpose behind the money. Maybe it's the lifestyle it will give you. Maybe it is assurance of a comfortable retirement. You have to be clear with your why. And a lot of these things you will need to take time on your own to just unpack for yourself. And I really suggest you unpack it writing in writing so that you're able to come back and refine what you've already written. So you start with why, purpose of your life, purpose of your business, how your business will feed into your life purpose. And then you also need to think about your end game. I work with especially two mentors. I have others, but the ones that I see regularly are two. And one of them one time asked me, Carol, what will your business look like? when you're done with it. So what's your end game, right? And this becomes your vision of your business, okay? So we've talked about mission of your business. We talk about your end game. When you're done with your business, what will it look like? And you need to articulate it because this begins to begin to say, my business exists for this purpose. And at the end of my business, this is what I want it to be. Because you need to also be able to unpack this vision for your team for stakeholders, for potential clients even, for potential partners. And so you need to know at the end of your business, what will it look like? It could be to serve all, um, to serve um, parents of discerning parents in East and Central Africa, that might be it. Or it might be to be the best company, the best auto garage in whichever area in Nairobi. But you have to be very clear about your end game and articulate that very well. And then there's the how, which is really about your values. In short, what are your guiding principles? In Huru Consult, our guiding principles include excellence, honor, integrity, and others, right? So you don't have need to have too many, maybe five of them, but what principles will guide your business? And out of your guiding principles, out of your company values, you can then develop um, your behaviors because everybody needs to live by your values, live by your guiding principles. So these three become the overarching thing that you're pursuing in everything you do. There's the mission, the why. And of course you want to make money, but that's not the primary why. It could be to transform organizations by providing, and that's not who consults, but I'm just making it up as I go but to transform organizations by providing bespoke management and training consulting 
services. And then for a consulting company, for example, the end game might be to be the most sought after consulting company in our chosen segments in East and Central Africa. Sometimes with your end game, you can put a deadline to it, but you don't have to. It can also be a continuous one. Then the values, as I said, for us, it is uh, um, excellence, integrity, engagement, which includes collaboration, creativity. And we actually have a core value of fun because we believe in enjoying ourselves as we do what we do. But those ones came from my heart as I developed them for Hulu Consult. Your core values have to extol what you want your people to be every day in your business. Okay, wonderful. So strategy in a nutshell is about clarity. And that's one thing you're going to keep hearing throughout our session because strategy can't be successful if we are not clear about what we are doing. And it's clarity about three main things. And these are the three things Anytime you're developing a strategy, you need to have these things in mind. Where are you going? Where are you now? And the third thing is, what do you need to do? So where now next is a, is a model that will help you in anything. If you think about your life, where do you want to go? Where are you now? What do you need to do to get you where you want to go? So you need to be crystal clear about those three things. In this case, we're talking about your business. So in your business, you need to think about that. So let's look at them one by one. Where is, what is your strategy period? So where do you want to go? So how long is your strategic period? After COVID, many people started making them shorter because they were saying the future is so uncertain, but you have to define it. Is it one year? Is it two years? Is it the next three years? You rarely see people going to five years, but you still can because now we have a level of stability. And then what do you want to accomplish by that time? And that then is what gives you your broad business goal. So you can say by 2026, we want to be here. And then you just define broadly what you want to have accomplished by that time. You could say five new branches. You could say um, sales of X amount. So you define broadly what you want to have accomplished by then. You don't go into the details yet at this point. You just broadly outline. So at most you'd have like five, but even five are a lot in terms of your broad business goals. But at most there'd be five. I think at a minimum there'd be two or three things that you want to do. And then you look at now. And now it's very important. You start by thinking about your brand. Your brand is how the market perceives you. So where are you now? How are you currently perceived? How do you want to be perceived? You also think about your environmental analysis where you use models like Lopest, where you look at the legal environment, the political environment, the economic environment, social and technology, and just talk about it, the implications for your business, things that you can leverage on. Of course, you can't do strategy without doing a SWOT analysis, what are the strengths of your businesses? What are the weaknesses of your business? What opportunities and threats exist? So strengths and weaknesses, of course, internal. Opportunities and threats, you look at the external of your business. And then you talk about your target customers. You need to be so intimate with your customers. Who are they? What do they like? What do they like? What are they looking for in the services that or, or the products that you sell? What do they want? You need to really know them. You need to profile them. They even can have a name and a gender, if at all. So that you really, when you're thinking about your customers, you're really thinking about a whole person who has a life, who has a background. So that's it with the target customers. You also need to think about this business that I'm doing. What are the critical success factors? For instance, if I'm running a school, a kindergarten. So this is a school for nursery school. My target customer, of course, are the children, but ultimately the parents of young children. Critical success factors that it needs to be accessible, it needs to be clean, it needs to be well laid out with bright colors. I need to have excellent teachers. There needs to be a friendly culture that is conducive to the child. If I don't have those elements, my customers, even if they come, they won't stay very long. So those are the critical success factors. And then as you think about that, you assess the critical success factors against your key competitors. So don't live in a tunnel imagining that it's only you there. <laughs> 
because it's not just you in that market, other people, other kindergartens are targeting that same client. So based on the critical success factors, you analyze yourself and you analyze your key competitors. And then, of course, you have to think about marketing. And with marketing, there's a bigger conversation around this. But in essence, you just have to think about the four Ps, which is your product. What are you selling? How do you offer it to the market, right? So your product, the price, and all these have strategies, by the way. So there's product, there's price, there's a place. So how do we get them to your clients? And of course, we have to use online platforms. And then there's promotions. How will people know that you exist? How will people know where to find you? And of course, for these things, you can leverage on digital. Even for competition analysis, there's a lot of information out there. If you're in networks and associations, you can get a lot of information as well. A lot of companies also are, are, are publishing their reports. And so you can get quite a bit of information. Your clients also can tell you a lot as well. So you do need to do that, but you also need to think about the risks that your business um, are uh, is facing and you need to think about it in a coherent way. So just a little bit about risks because entrepreneurs are often so optimistic, everything will go perfectly, but some things can go wrong and it's prudent as a good entrepreneur to think about that. Strategic risk. And this is good to put at the beginning because you could set a strategy that may not actually fly. So that is the risk, which is why you want to do it really thoroughly to minimize this risk. Again, compliance and regulatory risks. We are talking a lot about taxes at the moment, but then there are other areas of compliance like your licenses. If you don't have your license and you're closed down, that's definitely a risk. So you need to take those into account. Financial risks, a lot of what we do requires investment. Again, if you're running your business and your clients are not paying you, that can present a financial risk. So you need to think about that. Operational risk as well, the way your business runs, if it's not running well, you can find yourself um, having customers who are not happy because your systems and your structures are wrong, and that can lead to your business actually failing. And then there's reputational risk, the name you have out there, you want to guard it, you want to protect it and build up on it well. Other risks you need to think about, which are more macro, is political and economic Stability risk, remember we talked about the pest analysis, which includes political and economic. Then you need to think about health and safety for your workers, um, your employees, and then there's also commercial risk. Maybe the business model you have, maybe the approach you have might not go well in your market. So you really need to think about that. Is my product, my service, the way I want to offer it, commercially viable? I know many of you have been in business for a long time, so you know that this works, but still you need to think about it because there are always competitors entering the market. Something can happen. Maybe your suppliers can stop being able to supply you or um, you can find that your, your customers now are preferring, let's say a smaller size or a bigger size. So you always want to be aware about the fact that there's commercial risk. And then of course, there's also staff risk. And all these are things you need to think about when you're looking at strategy. So the time you set aside to develop your strategy is a time of deep reflection, a time when you really think through everything in detail. And you don't just do it once, even once it's done, you always need to be aware that things could change at a drop of a hat. And so you have to be on top of things, always looking ahead, always looking at the things that can affect your business. And so to manage risk, three main things, assess, mitigate. So put in place measures. Insurance is a big one also, because there's fire, there's burglary, there's uh, Weber and other things we need to think about. And then keep reviewing. And keep reviewing also your, um, your environment in terms of Lopez, in terms of everything else as well. So that was where, and that was now. Then we need to look at next. What are you going to do? You need to set goals for the business. So in the next five years or whatever your strategic period is, where do you want your business to be, right? You need to think about the client and market. You need to think about operations and compliance. You need to think about people and you need to think also about giving back to the community. And be very definite. So in the next five years, where do you want to be business-wise? And this can include your financial performance in terms of mainly sales and profitability, but also 
in terms of your business structure? Will you just keep on having one branch or do you want to expand to other branches? And there's no right or wrong, ladies and gentlemen. There's literally no right or wrong. It's all about your business and where you want it to go and just mapping that out. Some of the things you can think about is maybe going into different countries or if you're still operating within Kenya, maybe you're just in one part of the country, going into the next county as well. All that can be part of your strategy, but it needs to be well-defined. And one thing that many, many stakeholders, particularly potential investors are insisting upon now is ESG. So you need to also think about the environmental impact of what you're doing and mitigating that. You also need to think about the social impact and social includes your people. So it's already touched upon here, but it's also about the, the, the communities that you're operating in. So of course, there's also an impact that where it's mentioned there, but you also need to think about governance and governance is where compliance comes in. And the four pillars of governance are that you be fair in everything that you do. You run your business with integrity, you're transparent and you're accountable. So all these are all encompassing and everything you do in your business in terms of setting your goals in these five areas, need to ensure that you're taking into account ESG, especially for the sustainability of your business. Other investors also like to look at, um, at uh, um, there's an important thing I wanted to say, um, how you run your business. Of course, we talked about uh, governance as well. Um, and also they need to, they like to look at sustainability of your business, making sure that your business, of course, will continue remaining viable. And so these five areas, if we look at them in detail, you'll be able to do that. Okay. And each of them, by the way, is a webinar by themselves. So of course, we don't have time to do that. But at least I hope I'm giving you blocks that you need to consider very well. When it comes to client and markets, I already mentioned about the four Ps. I already also talked about um, them. So what you want to do is to set very tangible goals for these five areas. They don't have to be many, maybe just two or three, but that now those ones now become like the wheels that will take you where you want to go in the next three years, whatever strategic period you've decided for yourself. And you also want to include ESG. And yes, I remembered what I wanted to say about um, investors. They also look very closely at sustainable development goals, the SDGs. There are 17 of them. And you do want to do some research on the SDGs and find out in which area does your business directly fall. Uh, definitely, um, there's the one, I don't remember the number, but the one for decent work is definitely applicable to all of us because we are employers, but there are others as well. Okay, very good. So smart goals, um, you can't run away from them. So the goals that you set here for these five areas need to be very smart, right? Remember operations is also about how you run your business, the systems, the structures. Here, you really want to take advantage of digitalization as well. So smart goals, they need to be specific, they need to be measurable, they need to be achievable, relevant, and time-bound. So how do we achieve that? Let me just take an example. If we look at the business, so you can say in the, let's say in the next three years, and we define when those three years are, it's not a moving, it's not a moving target. So we can say we're in 2023. So by 2026, December, so that makes it time-bound, we want to have opened five new branches. And we can be so specific as to say where. So it's measurable, five new branches. Is it achievable? You know the resources you have. You know how you're going to do that. So you can know if that's achievable or not. You don't just make goals out of nowhere. It has to be achievable. Is it relevant? Yes, because we want to expand our business. We want to grow. We want to increase our revenues. And so the time bound is after three years, by the end of 2026. And that's how you evaluate your goals. So don't just have goals hanging in the air. And you want to set very clear goals for all the five areas I mentioned. So you need to be thorough. Think through thoroughly. Think through carefully. If you have a team, let's say you have a co-founder, you have directors, you're working together, you want to do this together because with minds thinking together, it will help. Or if you have a management team, do it with them as well. Make sure you get accurate research. Entrepreneurs, good entrepreneurs look for information. So do your research and involve your team as well. And before you say now it's done, review it, refine it, make sure it is 
what, what I say, make sure it's tight, that it's not having too many words, too many things, but it's very clear and it is well refined. And anyone looking at it will be able to know this is what we are looking to do as a business. One thing I normally say is that time invest, invested in planning minimizes waste in execution. So you want to invest the right time, good time in your planning so that you eliminate waste in execution. Good. So the final section is uh, once you're done with the planning, and remember you can type in your questions and your comments in chat because we will be coming to them towards the end of our session, is you move to tactics. So one mistake entrepreneurs make is that we get into the tactics while we're doing the strategy. No, first you develop the strategy, then you get into the tactics. The tactics are the steps that now, the how, the things that now you're going to do to achieve the strategy. So once your strategy is done, you then need an implementation plan. Still divided in those five areas, where now you say, this is what we want to do in five years or whatever period you've set. So this year, we are focusing on this. So typically your implementation plan should now go in yearly cycles. Your implementation plan should also be broken down into quarters and then this month, so that every time you have things which are building up to what you want to accomplish by the quarter, and then what you're doing every quarter should build up to what you want to accomplish by the end of the year. But always you're keeping the end of the year in mind because by the end of the year, that those are your measures in terms of how successful or not you've been. So this involves allocating resources, um, determining what needs to be done, when and how it will be done in a logical sequence. So you don't start at point K, then you come back to A later on. So you do need to think through, and by the way, I've done this, it's hard work, <laughs> but it's worth it because you come out of those exercises with a lot of clarity. What needs to be done, in what order, by who, by when, and then making sure that you also say that we shall be reviewing. I recommend every month, as a minimum, every quarter, you have to sit down and say, right, this is what we said we will do. What have we done? What has gone well? What has not gone so well? What are we going to do to catch up so that we achieve our strategy? Okay, so resource allocation as well, important in terms of time, in terms of people, in terms of the tools you need, and the financing as well. And you want to focus on achieving your goals with as little waste as possible. You want to be efficient, right? So tactics, very important to be very clear about the goal itself, but also about the steps you take to achieve it, to be simple about it. If things are complicated, people will own it and to make sure it is aligned to your overall strategic objectives for the five years or whatever period you've set two years or maybe maybe three, but also for the one year. And then it has to be cascaded to your team appropriately. I mean, they don't need to have everything, but for instance, your head of operations needs to know how operations fits into the larger strategy. They need to understand what the larger strategy is. For the machine operator, he needs to know how he needs to run that machine as well. And he needs to be measured on that. And that's where performance management for your team members, including you, come in, comes in because everything needs to be integrated, right? Everything needs to be integrated because everything everybody is doing should fit in to the overall strategy. And it needs to be owned. People need to own their piece of, their, of the contribution that they're making into the strategy. So some challenges that um, can be experienced is getting commitment of your team, achieving alignment, um, accessing data, but I've already said information is there. For entrepreneurs, we just don't look. If you read the papers, if you read the economic review, if you look for information on your industry, you'd be amazed at how much information is now available. I've been a consultant for over 16 years. When we started, a lot of data wasn't accessible, especially for Africa. Now it is. I get amazed because when I'm developing strategic plans, let's say for someone in hospitality, there are even on hospitality outlooks. Just type in there, hospitality outlooks for Kenya, hospitality outlooks for Africa, and you'd be amazed. I've done also strategic plans for a pharmaceutical company, it's there. Somebody who does metal manufacturing fabrication, I found information, there's so much data available, restaurant information, hospitality information is there 
a lot of it. Even for consulting, I, I was doing mine recently and I found amazing data. So there is data available. You just have to mine it. You have to get it. You have to extract it so that it makes sense for your business. And of course, um, consultants are there to help you with that if you need help. But you can easily do it yourself because nowadays with Google, information is just available at the touch of a button. And then uh, another challenge is that resources are there, but they're not being allocated well. And goals are not smart. You really want to make sure your goals are crystal Crystal, crystal clear, because if they're not smart, then we would know whether we've hit our targets or not. And yes, as we said, we want to invest the time in planning and we want to make sure that we are super clear about everything that we're doing. So to evaluate um, your strategy, very important that you keep it current, okay? So your strategy needs to be current, that the data you're using, the information you're using, internal information, external information, it's current information. It is simple, it is clear. Clear goals, remember, clear implementation plan, and it is aligned, okay? So that everything is working together. So your operations are working together with marketing. Everything that you're doing is leaning towards achieving the plan with as minimal waste and that it is owned by your team members. So that brings it to the end and I'm happy to see that we are right at eight o'clock, which is the time that I did need to stop so that we can have time for interaction. So now we can, we understand strategy and uh, we have also looked at developing an effective strategy and tactics, how you get it done. Because strategy is not enough just at the planning stage. We have to then put it to work so that we can achieve what it is that we intended to do. So what was your confidence before and what's your confidence now? So you can put a number, the number before, dash, and then the number now. And what will you apply from what we learned and what questions do you have? Thank you. Yeah, so let's start by putting our strategy before and um, strategy, our confidence before and our confidence now. And then what will you apply from what we've learned and what questions do you have? Waiting for your responses to come through in chat. And um, I'll pass it over to the team to help to moderate the questions as well. Thank you. Thanks, Princess. It was eight before and it's now eight. <laughs> Techno Spark, I know that's not your name. Um, well, what was it before? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. That was really fantastic. And uh, I know m many of you are wondering uh, uh, at the quality of presentation. Carol is also a master trainer, so she can train you to be a trainer. Yeah. Uh, I am not seeing questions as at now, but maybe I can start. Carol, there are, uh, there are some founders here who don't have teams, or some have uh, um, teams uh, that are not very wide or big. Yes. Uh, when developing yes. a strategy, do, do, if you are the only person, can you just go ahead and develop it? If you have a team of uh, five to 10 people, do you really need them or you can still develop and share with them? Exactly. Um, so it's a, it depends on the point at which your business is. But yes, you can do it yourself. If you're just starting, if your business is still young, you can do it on your own. But one thing that has been found very useful, especially when it comes to strategy implementation, is developing accountability. So I really encourage you, even if you're working on your own or your team is very small, you can have a level of accountability with your team, but also find one or two other business people that you can work with in terms of sharing, of course, not the detail, but at least your targets and how you're doing towards them. Two very important measures, sales and uh, profitability, but you can add other things and you say, these are the things we shall be meeting every month and keeping a check on one another. When entrepreneurs meet, there's a wonderful exchange of ideas, but you, you have to look for people who are serious and committed um, so that it's not just you meet, then you have your teas and your coffees, but you're not actually working. That meeting needs to be a business meeting and done well, it can actually be an hour 
but you'll find that you don't want to come and report that you only achieved small sales and yet you had said you want to acquire five new customers a month. So those are some of the things that you can do, Edna. I hope that helps. Yeah, thank you. So accountability is very important. Now, I think if you... Uh, the question? Uh, in the service industry. From Christine. Yeah, Christine is asking, thanks so mm -hmm. much for deep insights. My question is, do you have any links for a strategic template? Um, there's one that I usually use, um, but I know I'll have, because I, I developed this, uh, present, you guys are getting it the first time. So I developed this from, um, from uh, some of the other work I've done. So if you give me a few, a day or two, maybe a day, I'll be happy to make one and share it with you. But even if you go online, you can find a number of them. There are some. And there are also one or two resources I'll share with you that you'll be able to use as well and develop. But if you just use the flow of the presentation, you'll actually have your template. But I'll share one with the team by end of day today. Thank you. Okay, Melvin is also asking, in your experience, what percentage of MSME strategies are fully owned by the company? So, um, I'm laughing because, as I said, it's one thing to develop the strategy, it's another thing to implement it correctly. So what I try to do when I'm working with companies is to get a firm meeting every month. So very often that happens well for one or two months and then people start getting busy and saying, no, we'll do it next week. And then you find two months have passed and so on. But um, really important to get into the discipline of doing it. Some do and some own it. I worked with an entrepreneur for four years that had done it, that we would meet because what we said every first, I think it was the first or the second Tuesday of the month, eight o'clock to around 11. Is on this, is we're going to meet and we're going to review the milestones that we had set for that month. And what we were able to do is to incorporate some leadership training and other conversations depending on the issues that emerge. So yes, um, if there's ownership, it's, um, it's high, but in general, people are not 100% committed to the strategies that they make. So I think you'd find about 30%, 30 to 25 to 30% are the ones that own it and run it. It is, it is, there is some personal development involved in terms of you need to take an honest look at some of the things that have caused um, failure or disappointment in the business before and make conscious decisions, committed decisions that things will be different. And that's also where the accountability comes in when you're working with a team. It could be a co-founder or um, a management team. Because now we check each other and there's what is called positive peer pressure that I can't go and report that I've not done my part as the operations manager or as the, as the head of marketing. And that does help to raise the percentage. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Liz Wanzao uh, says uh, I got, she got an idea but needs assistance to put it together in the service industry. Maybe you can say something about uh, if you provide support. Yeah, I mean, we definitely do that. You can talk to us and, and we can see how to support you. Um, so depending on the level of involvement, if it's just a just a Q and A, we can do that very fast with you. Otherwise, um, if it's a deeper engagement, of course, there'll be some a financial implication. But yeah, we can talk, and I'll be sharing my email address as well as we wind up our session. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And from Unisolau, what strategy can the motorbike selling spare parts with unsteady economy and moving to electric motorbike? So what I think the question, mm -hmm. carry on Edna. Yeah, I think the question is what what could that uh, kind of business strategy look like? And then she says the person has not sold more than eight thousand, yet the rent and worker payment cost is twenty five thousand for over nine months. Use this as a case study. Definitely can, and there are so many. I mean, why do businesses uh, fail? Why why is their strategy failure? Um, I think one is to understand where you are and then to look at the different factors that you're dealing with and then to decide, should I stay in this business or should I look for another business? Remember we said you start with why? 
So what we want a bit is also to find out the reasons behind the poor performance. Are other similar businesses doing well? Then why is yours not doing well? Because if you get clarity with that, you know, it's like when you go and see a doctor and you say, these are my problems, then they're able to say, then these are the solutions. This is the medicine that you need. So unless a proper diagnostics is done, I can't speak to your specific situation. But what I can say is that think through what's going on. Um, is it the marketing? Is the issue with the marketing? Is the issue with the operations? The way the business is running, maybe the opening hours, maybe you should go online or maybe you rushed online uh, with the rent. Is Are there options around that? Like instead of doing having a place, doing deliveries instead and maybe storing the items in a less expensive place. There are so many options. So I can't say do this. So I can't be prescriptive. But what I can say is look at the reasons behind it, especially if we look at those five areas, um, especially when you look at marketing, operations and people and also cash flow in terms of um, your sales, your, your collections and other things, you'll be able to find out the reason why. And sometimes the issue might just be a leadership issue that um, you are just not leading the way you need to lead to ensure that you're successful. I hope that helps. All right, thank you. Perhaps the last question, uh, this is a comment from Miriam. Awesome presentation, Caro. I need to consult and follow through my strategic planning to achieve results. Yeah, so there's some job for you there. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Caro. I think I'll give it back to Paul Peter to be able to, to, to help us finalize. Okay, um, so before, before you do, allow me just to wrap up. Um, so these are the resources. I'll share this with the team so that you achieve it on a, you receive them on email, these links, five steps to a strategic plan, just, just a bit of extra reading. And then what's the strategic planning process? It may not all apply to your business because it depends on where your business is, but ultimately you can um, use these tools um, to do that. And then there's an interesting read there on type of risks your business faces. So those are my, my details at gmail.com you can also connect with me on linkedin and that's my whatsapp number so you can either text me directly or use whatsapp not a problem but i'll be happy to hear from you as a follow-up to this and i'll also share with the team the template so you'll get that together with the links uh, by this evening i'll share with the team so you should have it by tomorrow morning so that you can do this i always say that it's not enough to know what to do but you have to actually do it and that's where the different lies. So as I wrap up, remember Jack Welch said in real life strategy is actually very straightforward. So let's not be dazzled by all the fancy looking things, but let's just be very systematic about where we want to go, where we are now and the steps we need to do next. And as you do re your reviews, if you need to make some course corrections, change direction, refine a little bit, do it. All that is part of strategy development and execution. Thank you very much. And I hand you over back to the team to wrap up. Asante Nisada. Bye now. Thank you very much, Caro. And a very beautiful and timely talk on uh, strategy. Uh, that's that's very uh, informative. We are very happy and grateful. And uh, yes, uh, all of you who are here for the first time, you see, you are able to live your dream here. We share, we bring uh, powerful people to share. And for your information, Caroline is also in the WhatsApp group, so she will be able to share that. And part of the strategy is every Wednesday, we share what we do as, a, uh, as members of the group. So all this information is at your disposal. I'd like to invite Dr. Melvin to be able to uh, give a vote of thanks officially on our behalf. And then uh, we will uh, do some brief announcements and then we uh, call it a day. Melvin, 